It's a good question. What's yeah. your goal? What's your goal? You know, what do you <laughs> honestly see? Is it for home defense? Is it you want to take something out? You know, you have somebody looking at a small gun, but if I talk to a, a female, I'm like, is it just home defense, or do you honestly see yourself shooting it? She says, well, I want to go out and shoot it. Okay, don't buy a small gun. Buy a larger gun. Jason Martin, how are you, man? I'm doing outstanding. Good, good, good. I, I, I was just complimenting you on your Aloha shirt. I love it. Yep. Crabs and guns. Crabs and, and guns. <laughs> can't ask for anything better, right? Does it get, doesn't get any better <laughs> than that, right? That's right. And you said you're from Maryland originally? I'm originally from Maryland, so I moved out here in 2007. Oh, nice. What brought you out here? So I worked for the Department of Defense, so I was out here supporting the Navy for years. Oh, we cool. had our first kid, so we decided, hey, I'm always out here. Let's come out here. and This is home now. This is home now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Tell us about practical is tactical. So practical is tactical is my little play on words mm-hmm. for um, my little company that I started doing firearms training and then CCW training. So here in northern San Diego County, I train out of Paula shooting range. So I know most people I meet go, oh, my God, that's so far away. But, you know. it's not, how far, where exact, Tell people where exactly, where exactly is it. How do you get so there? So Paula shooting range, you just head up the 15, get on the 76, heading – about four miles east, you got the Pala Casino right there across the street. Literally, is Pala Shooting Range. It is the longest shooting range in Southern California. Yeah, and th- how long is it? Eight hundred and ninety yards. Mm. Every LE agency in Southern California trains there at certain different times of the weeks. So that's really not that bad. It's not that bad getting out there. No, it's. I mean, if you live in Imperial Beach, maybe it's a bit of a hike. Correct. Yeah, but if you once you get to the seventy six. The 76, right? Correct. Smooth sailing. You're fine. Yeah. It's beyond the 76 is where it's Yeah, about. and just don't do it at like 8.30 a.m. on a Monday through Friday. <laughs> you know, you'll get hit. Well, actually, you, you'll be the opposite. No, you'll be more like 4.30, 4 5 o'clock yeah. on Monday through Friday. Correct. Yeah. Late um, afternoon, you hit all the Temecula traffic, but in, right. the, in the mornings, you're going against it. How many, uh, how many ranges or how many oh, slots? Goodness. So the range is divided up between the rifle range which goes out to 890. Then it's got the pistol range, which goes out to 75. And then it has a small shotgun range, which goes out to about 60. Okay. But then they do um, three-gun matches and different matches out there. So that starts at the 300 yard where they've got 10 different days. So they can run various matches. So during my training groups, I sync with the match days so I can use those bays. Mm. But then other times that I'll sync with the – what are the LE agencies doing Mm -hmm. and then just take another bay or something that I can do it. And then they have a full air conditioned heating, brand new classroom facility there. Well, I didn't know that. Yep. Good for them. When did that go up? That went up about two years ago. Oh, that's awesome. So they nice big classroom. Is it it, so that, so that's where you use, you know, that's where I do my official training out is out of the classroom. there. (laughs) Sometimes if I have smaller classes, I'll do them, um, do the actual classroom portion at the gun shop that I part-time out of there in Fallbrook, Fallbrook guns. And so we'll do that. Is that range on? Is it is it the the Rincon tribe that no, owns it? Would it would be the Apala Band of Indians. Oh, okay, all right. So it's on your way to Rincon. Okay. So Rincon would be the next one after Apala. Gotcha. But yeah, it's a it's a little gem here in Southern California. Yeah, it really is. Is that unusual that the Indian reservations would have a range? Uh, no, most Indian reservations do not. So well, we, I, well, I mean that's what I'm saying. They usually yeah. don't. Correct, and they That's don't. So we actually owe them. A, we, you know, we actually are very thankful for the yeah, tribe oh yeah. to actually give us that opportunity that non-tribal members can come onto that property and use it. Because Barona has got plenty of land for a great range. Mm-hmm. Viejas, maybe not so much, but yeah, you know, it's yeah. So it's, it's a lot of work creating you, that relationship. You know, I've I've been approached by uh, a tribe, at least one tribe, I'll say, and their 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 leadership. Um, asking, you know, hey, we're we're our own nation. We don't have to put up with, you know, we don't have to abide by the California gun laws. There's a place for that. <laughs> they were like, we're they were like, hey, why don't we open up a gun shop and just sell whatever the heck we want? We don't have to abide by this stuff. And I'm like, oh, there's some ups and downs there, but <laughs> yeah. I because I mean, it, it, they're their own sovereign nation, right? They are their own sovereign nation. The however, as soon as they leave the nation, right. Everything kicks Everything back changes. in. Everything changes. So right. Yeah, so just you know, don't leave the nation and you're okay. So, <laughs> and there are members, there are tribal members that do get their concealed carry permits for mm-hmm. either San Diego or Riverside. Right. And right. they have, you know. So uh, do you do the three gun and the IPSC and the IDPA? I used IDPA? to do all of that kind of stuff. I yeah. used to do long range, IPSC, NRA high power, all the various shootings. Um, I actually 
used to do machine gun shoots when I lived back in Maryland. So I actually owned a machine gun when I was in my younger years. What would you own? I owned an MP5. Oh, man. Yep. You you were like Charlie Sheen. Yep. Well, it was 1996, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Everybody wanted an MP5. Everybody wanted an MP5. MP5. For those of you not old enough to remember, as soon as that movie came out, it came out in 1990, I'm pretty sure. Yep. And throughout that, everybody wanted an MP5. MP5. Everybody in the 90s wanted an MP5 up until, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 9-11. When the war kicked off and they started doing flat tops on ARs, then boom, the M4 just took over. But th- throughout the 90s, everybody, everybody wanted an MP5. MP5. And they wanted that MP5, SD, whatever with the, with yeah. The, with the Navy lower, with the multiple... Yeah, exactly. Everybody wanted under it. four grand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> cheaper than a. It, let's put it in perspective. This was a pre pre eighty six transferable machine gun. So at that time, I it was about five grand. Yeah, I sold it twelve years later for almost twenty thousand dollars. Jeez, why'd you sell it? Because it was twenty thousand dollars. Because he's coming to I California. Live, I live here in California, <laughs> so I, I I started having nightmares of it getting stolen from yeah. where I stored it back in Maryland. So, well, plus twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. I, I traded it for something investment. that I could have here. So. That's a month's worth of gas. <laughs> <laughs> How bad could that be? How bad to be? So, as a trainer, what do, what is your what are your thoughts on uh, on on competitive shooting? You know, someone getting involved in you know informal competitive shooting. So, I've heard lots of different trainers. You know, I'm not not old at this game. I've heard lots of trainers say, "Oh, you learn bad habits." <clears throat> I think it's kind of a both because you you know. You know, we talk about getting off the X. You know, that's the one thing about competitive shooting is it, it teaches you to be able to utilize your gear, understand your gear, and understand your weapon. And, of course, getting off the X in order to... What engage. does that mean, getting off the X? Uh, most trainers, people train statically. So they stand in their bay and they shoot and they get static and they think that, okay. But in a defensive encounter, you don't want to stand there and just have a, an assailant come after you. you. You want to move. And as part of your self-defense architecture you know when you're building your self-defense of course is you want to be able to say what did you do did you just stand there pull your gun and shoot or did you try to escape you know because in self-defense we want to try to uh, run hide or fight Mm -hmm. i mean that's our that's our order for self-defense but if you yell at them to stand still they won't they probably will not (laughs) (laughs) hey stay stay right there let me shoot you for a minute get get over there to the left Stop fighting, stop fighting it. It's going to happen. Stop fighting it. It's going to happen. You got to go into. You got to go into a defensive gun use with that level of uh, confidence. Mentality. Like, it's going to happen. <laughs> no matter what you do. Well, in the Marine Corps, they taught us. They said, if you get in a knife fight, take a cut. Take, take a cut. Yeah. You know, because well, you're gonna. You know, you're gonna get cut. Oh. Yeah. So, okay, what kind of bad habits uh, do trainers typically see people pick up in, comp- you know, in- informal competitive, IDPA, IPSC, whatever? So most people will pick up bad habits of just drawing and shooting right off the bat. You know, uh, they, they lose the decision-making. They, they lose the, the decision-making. Pavlov's the, dog. The, yep. the bell goes the off bell and goes they up, shoot. Beep, boom. I'm going straight for it. <laughs> yeah. In real life, there's not going to be that beeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, because yeah. a defensive encounter is very dynamic. You know, it could – as soon as you pull the gun, it was like, whoa, wait a minute, I'm not doing this, you know? Yeah. So it's it's those kind of habits that they may not like. I think, I, I, I think it's great. I think uh, going and doing informal competitive shooting, I think, it, and I say informal on purpose, I think that if you get really, really into, you know, uh, you know uh, competitive shooting, you buy all the gear and you start, something, something happens. I'm not saying it's bad. If you want to get into it, get into it. But um, you start gaming, you know, you start, it's, it turns into less of a, I'm learning how to defend myself and more into, I need to learn how to, how to win the game. Yep. I think if you just go and, and just don't worry about making it to the top of the heap, you just go and, and and with the mindset of, Hey, I am practicing right now. I'm having fun. It's, it's dynamic. You know, I'm not just standing there. Uh, but it's practice. Yeah, and I, I, like I said, I think the better benefits, obviously, besides those, is the fact is you're you're learning to move and shoot because most people don't get to learn and to move and shoot at the same time. We have limitations and safeties on the range that prevents us from actually doing that. So when you go to a match, whether it be an indoor match or an outdoor match, you actually get to move and shoot. So you can actually see what your what your ability is mm-hmm. on moving and shooting. 
Now, do you have a particular niche? Is there something uh, that you teach uh, better than anybody or something that you like to focus <laughs> on? Or uh, So for my course, I, I kind of provide my I, – I do about three hours of range time during my CCW classes. So we, we actually go through, and, you know, and I'll have students running around and doing things and pushing them to their limits to see where they go. You know, so we'll push through, see how fast, and come back. So I, I, I do that. My classes are generally fairly small. So I can get to know my students and then kind of feel, okay, why, why, Mike, why do you need a concealed carry? What is it that you feel that you need a concealed carry for? And then I can have somebody tell me this, and I say, okay, now, now I can kind of tr- cater the training to you a little bit better. And I try to figure out what, a, what is between each student's little niche. What if he says, because I got a cool new holster? <laughs> I say, come on, let's work it. Let's see if it's really you, cool. It might you, look cool. Yeah, I'm making fun of my holster. <laughs> I think your holster's cute. But can you really use it? Yeah, do you know how to use no, it? No, not yet. We'll I just, find out. I okay. just picked this up last yeah. week. So Last so. week, and you haven't put it on yet? No. No, not yet. It was sitting in my car for a little too long. <laughs> now it's so, still. It's I, like I wonder, Yeah, I got to put a baseball in it and put it under my mattress now. A little bit of Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do you got to put a baseball in it? No, that's an old. Come on, Dave. It's an old it's baseball, baseball, baseball glove. glove. Oh, that's right. What yeah, do I think? Yeah. Um, you got to put so, a gun in it and put it under your mattress. There you go. Yeah. So what uh, what made you become an instructor? How did that? What was that route? So that route. Oh wait wait wait. Oh, we got to think about it. Think we'll about it. answer it on the that's other side. One thing that's working is the music. I know. All right, we're talking to Jason Martin from Practical is Tactical. Tell us about the name. You were, first, you were, you were going to tell us how you got into Training. being an instructor, but before you do that, tell us uh, how'd you come up with the name Practical is Tactical. Tell us about that. So that was kind of you know. Other than it rhymes. It rhymes. It's a cool. It throws <laughs> off the tongue. No, it was more of along the lines of I kind of look at, you know, during the, during all, you know, you brought up all the different wars we've been going through. <clears throat> and a lot of training that we were seeing, people were buying battle belts and yeah. combat and tactical gear and all this other stuff. And then working at a gun shop, you know, I have people constantly coming in to buy this stuff, mm. you know. And then, of course, I'm looking at, you know, myself having had war body armor. I'm like. If I, somebody breaks into my house, I'm not going to be putting on body armor and a battle belt. If suddenly, you know, especially like during COVID, all of that stuff took off where people were buying that kind of stuff. I'm like, think about it. Are you really going to be wearing all that stuff? I mean, it's it's a difficult for active duty 20-year-olds to wear that stuff. And so moving forward, we look at what are you really going to have with you in a potential gunfight? You're going to be dressed like we're dressed right now. Right. Simple. You're going into the gunfight with what you have on to you. So that's the practical part. Or, you, or or sometimes you get the guys that are all decked. They just walk around all decked out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they, yeah. w- they were, w- what are they, they were, they were nicknamed. nicknamed tactical. The, well, tactical, but they're also the, it was the, uh, the shoot me first uniform. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> if yeah. you, if you're a bad guy and you walk into a room and you see a guy all decked out, out. you better go after that guy yeah. first. Yeah. You know, versus. Look at Dave over here, the guy in the car shirt and looking just pretty simple, you know? That's, That's his right. tactical outfit right there. That's he right. is simple. He's he, very he simple. He blends into where simple. he's going. <laughs> I, I have no idea where I'm going, yeah. but I'm very simple. Well, so that's at... where I came up with the name was, you know. What? Um, no, no, I was just saying, you, you know, you go out there and you look on the range, you're going to see lots of those tactical bags, tactical backpacks, and then you'll also see somebody with a diaper bag, someone who's got a very <laughs> inconspicuous, what? non-range looking gear. A yeah. diaper bag? Just for example, you know, something that's very anti-tactical, those are the best. That's the way to go. See, now people who see you, they'd know, they'd think twice and they come after you. <laughs> well, because you're all tacked out, right? Well, that's because I, well, I came from the range today. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. But normally, but... I don't always look like a lumberjack. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, <laughs> if you were going in an area where you didn't, you know, were you a little concerned of the area, that would be the way to dress. Uh, no, I think like Mike said, I might be the first one they take out. I think you just, just dress normal. I, I actually really like that. I, yeah. I think that's extremely uh, smart. I like the fact that we have so many resources, so many instructors that are former military or former law enforcement. I think that's great. But having an emphasis on, you know, hey, look, I, I'm not going to teach you to invade a country. You know, I need yeah. to teach you how to walk around yeah. town. There's nothing against all the companies and the trainers that do that. I think yeah. that training is awesome. Yeah. Everybody likes to do that, you know. But You're just giving them another – Another, flavor. another option. That's yeah. right. You know, I, I just people come to me because they're simple. I just bought a gun. So one of your questions earlier was, why did I get into training? So it kind of started during COVID. I'd always done firearm training, but the number of individuals that I had coming into the shop says, I need a gun right now. Jeez. And then I, I 
and we're looking at them going. You're not kidding. Why? I no. was I was mm -hmm. at a shop, and I, I've told the story before. I was at a shop right around COVID. I was talking to the owner about, okay, well, this is what they're saying you have to do to stay open or whatever. We're kind of having that conversation, and someone behind me said, "I need a gun," you know, and uh, the inst the uh, not the instructor, the employee behind the counter said, uh, "Okay, uh, what what do you what are you looking for?" And the person said, I don't care anything. I just need a gun right now. And that caused, like, everybody just turned around and looked at this. And it was somebody in uniform. It was, it was somebody, a military guy in uniform. And, uh, the, you know, uh, the employee talked to him, and he was scared. He was like, I don't know what's going was, on. You know, the whole world's day, shutting down. I need a gun. And it was day in and day out like that, from opening to close, where people who had never even thought about owning a firearm suddenly decided that the sky was falling and the hordes of the inner city was coming to get them, and they needed to have a firearm. And Some so, were right. Some were right. So that did happen in, yeah, some, in places, some places. You know? So, But then, of course, now as a gun sales, you know, you're looking at it, it's like, you could use some training. Yeah. You know, I don't want to just sell you a gun. You need some no, training. No, I don't want training. I want a gun. Yeah. Well, now you get that, that too. And so. You do. Part right. of it. You yeah. get that because I don't want to go messing around and get training. I just want to get a gun. Yeah. How, how many people were like, uh, how many people were like, hey, can I just pay extra and skip the 10 day wait period or get anything like <laughs> that? Could, uh, me and all the guys in the shop, we probably could have all bought nice homes in Maui by now. <laughs> if we'd accept it all but but isn't that funny now i was about to say in alpine you probably the, the the people the voters up there probably weren't voting for the anti-gunners but in a lot of these places it was people who voted for anti-gunners who were saying wait a minute what, what do you mean there's a 10-day wait period oh, i need pick, a gun now you why, know why are you I'm picking sorry. on alpine i'm not i'm saying alpine voted for the right people oh okay. so so okay. For, for a gun shop owner saying well if you hadn't have voted for the wrong people you wouldn't have a 10-day wait period that probably doesn't apply as much in Alpine. Yeah. They, they all tend to vote the right way. <laughs> well, and you but can it tell definitely did in downtown San Diego. And you can tell a lot of people that were from out of state when they walk in and they want a gun and they don't expect <laughs> to have to wait 10. Well, the other one days. is, you know, your firearm safety certificate. Oh, I can buy, you know, I have to still wait. I took the test. I passed it. You know, I was like, no, you still got to wait. We still right. got to have this. We still have to have that, which, you know, that didn't change the fact that. Right. Oh, I can only buy one. What do you mean I can only buy one? Yeah. You know, We're working on that too. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, you sold a lot of guns. For, talk about your shop real quick. Tell people where you work. So, I work part time at um, Falbert Guns, just a um, simple shop. We've been there for about 10 years now. We used to be BB Firearms. The BB's packed up in. Red. I said Alpine, Fallbrook. Fallbrook. I'm so yeah, sorry. I know. I Same, voters. <laughs> Same voters. Same voters, though. Same voters. <laughs> packed up and moved to Utah. So, they're part of your crew of they escaped California because they couldn't <laughs> do it. So, um, yeah, but I'm sure they were under a little bit more distress than some of these people that bail. Yeah, and more, more importantly, they're not they're not criticizing people for staying. They're they're be, they're wonderful people. Yeah, they're still supportive of San Diego County gun owners. Yeah. Um, so they moved out, but a good customer we had at that time, he um decided to step up and buy the shop. So nice. same employees, yep. different owners. You know, we still try to maintain that same level of um customer service. You know, come in. We're not trying. And I can tell you personally, they're awesome. Yeah, would you? What, what what kind of business did you transact in Fallbrook? I won. A gun. How did you find Fallbrook? <laughs> First of all, we're Fallbrook. You're Thomas all Brothers. the way out. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a Thomas guide. I have a Thomas guide. It's not hard to find. So well, what? Tell I'd us about won, your experience. I, what was it? A that was a barkeep. Yep, he won a little barkeep at your uh, oh, gun prom. Gun prom. Nice. And and I said I have to go where? <laughs> so I went and got my passport. <laughs> <laughs> so that I could get over the 78, because you have to have a passport. Yeah, you know, I heard about that. I heard about that long. And I walked in, and the place was semi-packed, to be honest with you. A lot of people were in there. A lot of women were in there. This one little old lady just couldn't make a decision to save her life, but she was a sweetheart. Aww. And went through all the paperwork, Yeah, piece of cake. Then they were auctioning off a, a rifle. Yeah. We did, until the until the first, yeah, we were. But unfortunately, we I did not win, so I've not been back. <laughs> you were there. You were. You won a gun. That's why you were there. I wanted the rifle. You wanted to win another gun. I wanted to win another. But I went across the street, had the best lunch I've had as far as barbecue goes. Yeah, barbecue place is really good. What's the name of that barbecue place? That's the Firehouse, Firehouse. Crew, Q and Beer. Yeah, 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 I've been there. Yeah, yeah it's really super good. good. Yeah. Yep, I'm starving. Okay, so. Uh, Fallbrook Guns, awesome shop. Used to be BBs. Used to be BBs. Um, you guys sell everything. Sell everything. Um, look for people. If people are looking for something, obviously we'll yeah. look for it. Yeah. You know? I like the educational aspect of the place. 
Yeah. You know, like when you walk in, you guys don't just say, okay, what do you want? All right, here it is. Have a nice day. You ask a lot of questions. Even though I won a gun, because I had some questions about it. I think I was talking about ammo and some other things. I mean, you really explained a lot more than I expected to get. I just thought I was going to go up and get my gun and and leave and leave. Yeah, we weren't going to let you do that. I noticed that. (laughs) But it's it's a it's a it's it's a good environment because we have all at this table talked about when you go in, especially if you're a female. Yeah, your intimidation is there. You guys, none of that. I mean, it was like going in and you knew everybody. Yeah, I, I think try guys, to keep it hometown, family out right. here. Well, it's Fallbrook. I yeah. think uh, you you want to hear. I think guys get more intimidated than women do when they go into a gun shop. To be honest with you. What do you think? Mm. And I here's don't. here's why. Here's okay, why I say here that. it comes. Now, if you're a guy and you've been around guns or whatever, okay, fine. You're, you're probably not intimidated. Well, what if you going to a gun shop? Have if you haven't, I think you that feel like there's an expectation. There's an expectation. I think guys that don't really know a lot about <laughs> guns are more intimidated going into a gun shop. Where I think women are just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not supposed to know about guns. You know, that's not a societal requirement. Where guys like you're, you're expected. You're to be a man. You're supposed to know. We'll about just guns. go watch John Wick, so, then go in. Yeah. So I watch guys like I've seen one. Uh, there's one. Uh, this one guy was asking about a uh, uh, a Beretta. Uh, this was years ago, and you could tell he he wanted this Beretta. Like, and he finally kind of edged up and was just like, hey, what do you think about that gun? And the guy was like, "Oh God, I wouldn't touch that gun. In fact, <laughs> I would. I don't." He said, "I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be caught dead with that gun. If, in fact, if I were caught dead, it'd be because of that gun." <laughs> and he, and he, and really? he go, yeah. And then he goes, "I wouldn't buy a gun without uh, a four in front of the caliber. That's it." <laughs> well, this dude totally recoiled, you know, and they kind of made his way out of the shop and didn't like, buy a gun. You could tell that I'm just standing there. You know, watching this all happen, you could tell this is not at your shop. This is another shop that's been out of business for years now. You could tell this guy fell in love with this Beretta, went down to the gun shop, and he wanted this other guy to validate, oh, gosh, a Beretta, yeah, you know? And that's what he should have done, you know? I mean, it's sitting there on his shelf being ready to be sold. You don't you don't bash it, yep. you know? So, anyway, uh, I think guys are more intimidated when they go into gun shops. Yeah, so, you know, my approach even with the training is, is what do you honestly see yourself doing with it, you know? It's a good question. What's your goal? What's your goal? You know, what do you honestly see? Is it for home defense? Is it you want to take something out? You know, you have somebody looking at a small gun, but if I talk to a a female, I'm like, is it just home defense or do you honestly see yourself shooting it? She says, well, I want to go out and shoot it. Okay, don't buy a small gun. Buy a larger gun because Mm -hmm. it's going to absorb the recoil a lot better and you're going to have it more enjoyable and you're going to learn how to shoot it better. If you want a self-defense gun, then okay, that's a different story. So, what are you seeing in 2024? 2023 was kind of a rough year, wasn't it, for gun sales? It was a rough year. Um, this year started off pretty good, but I mean, if you look at the national NIC system check, is down like 15% in sales really? for the month of, or background checks for the month of March. So. Hopefully, we'll be coming back up here soon. So, okay, you're going to stay with us on the show. So, we're, we're going to touch base with you throughout the show here. But what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, you can reach me at uh, practicalistactical.com. And you got practicalistactical.com? That's my. That's a score. That's mine. I'm surprised. I can't believe no one had already taken that because that's a really good URL. Okay, practicalistactical.com. Uh, Jason Martin, any kind of training, shotgun, pistol, rifle, shotgun, pistol, rifle, night shooting, you know, whatever you want to do. You want to do long range shooting? I'll show you how to do that too. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time. Or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 961, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.